All right, welcome back. So let's go to the next point, which is um, on page 21 in your books. Sharpen your edge, that is your grace, your gifts, and your skills. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 10. Let's read that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 10. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. Right. So here the Solomon is using a very practical example. He's saying, if the axe is dull, can you cut a tree? You'll be standing there the whole day trying to cut it. The axe is meant for cutting the tree. Right? But the edge is not sharp. So the person can keep cut, trying to cut, hey, nothing's going to happen. Why? The tool is, is meant for that, but it has not been sharpened. So in our professional careers, we have grace, we have gifts, we have uh, things that God has placed in us. That is our edge. Right? Some of you uh, here, Anand, you, and some of Prince as well. So you're all tech savvy. Right? You know a lot of technical things. Good, sharpen your edge, right? And there may be others here, you know, whether it's worship or whether it's media, graphics. Um, what graphics we used to do in 10 years back and now is so different right now, right? I think that's so, the mind, the thinking, it's so different, right? Uh, it could be painting, it could be anything. Sharpen your edge, right? Uh, don't stand with the blunt acts and say hey i want to do something for god right or i want to do something in my personal life as a i want to achieve this good right but you got to sharpen your head go back sharpen learn grow continuously develop read build yourself up right uh, if there are if if whatever area of uh, you know career that god is leading you towards so, for example, if you want to start your own business, what must you do? What do you think you must do? What can some of us do? Plan? Okay. No, so, how will you sharpen your edge? You know you're going to start a business. Okay, join the courses. Okay, join some courses. Okay, practically understand from other people. Look out for finances, okay. Some some of the other some very practical things is I like what you said, you know. Join classes. Nowadays on online, you have these one hour or two hours classes, right? It's two hours. It's not like a two years course. Two hours. And in the two hours, these guys would have had, you know, people who are successful, they've you know, they've had startups and their startups are successful. They'll give you some ideas. Hey, you do this, do this, do this. Then you see the growth. Oh, okay. So what are you doing? You're sharpening your edge. For example, you you know that <clears throat> sorry, you know you want to be a businessman, right? And now to be a businessman, you should also know how to speak well. Communication is the key. So hey, I want to learn English. So what can we do? You have your business, you sharpen your edge. Two hours a week, I will you know, probably join an online English class, or I will also read a book. What's happening? You're sharpening your edge. So your mind is not business, business. OK, this is the business. Uh, this is what it's good. But you also need to sharpen your edge for your business to do well. You get what I'm saying, right? If you want to be. Technically, you are, you know you you uh, you're in IT, right? Information technology, and you want to grow in that area. Oh, there's so much. It's a vast field. Right? There's so much that we can learn. So you put your hands to the plow. You sharpen your edge, right? And then when you translate it to ministry, you want to be a better preacher. Listen to sermons. You want to uh, you want to be a better worship leader. Listen to songs. Learn new songs. Learn instruments, keep practicing, develop yourself, keep sharpening your edge. <clears throat> and the more we sharpen our edge, the more we are building our strengths. Right? And it says here, uh, learn new things. And this will help you progress and transition towards fulfilling your life plan. 
Otherwise, what's going to happen? We'll be like the people of Israel. They're going around the mountain. They're going in circles. There's no progress at all. Right? For 40 years, they're going around that Mount Seir. I, I, was all, I always wondered, do you think they came to the place and they said, hey, we've been here, but why, why are we here? No, because one generation has gone already. One more generation. They're only going circle. They're thinking they're making progress. Oh, the promised land, maybe. You see, that time there's no Google Maps. And there's no no one to, you know, Moses didn't go up and say, hey, in 15 days we can be in the promised land. Moses, luckily, he didn't make that mistake. Right? In 15 days, you would have been there. Okay, with livestock and cattle, take another 15. One month. So we then, 30 days. But they were going in circles. Why? Because they, they had no idea what they were doing. Right? They were just on that same thing. No. God expects us to sharpen our edge. Right? So if there are things that we have to learn. We learn it. Right? Oh, we develop ourselves in that way. So I hope that, you know, five years from now, just giving a number, five years from now, spiritually, I should not be in the same place. If I'm in the same place, something is wrong. I've become lukewarm then. Right? I have to have seen improvement in my life. I have to have seen improvement in the ministries that I'm doing. I have to have seen improvement of the number of leaders that I'm able to raise up, potential leaders, or life groups, and all the ministries that I'm, that I'm overseeing. I should be able to see progress. If I don't see progress, then my axe is dull. You get what I'm saying? Right? The axe is dull. Now, not always progress is seen in numbers, right? especially in ministry. Progress is not always about numbers. Right? It's also about the number of people that we're able to minister to. It's about how we are able to speak into people's lives, building up people. All of that is there. But if my axe is dull, I will not be able to minister. I will not be able to be effective. So a good a good way to you know to access uh, to know our standing to check whether we are making progress is to look at the work that we have done if i if i've not seen fruit if i've not seen increase my access dull right so very important uh, i remember this uh, in 2014 we had the power to change campaign right and in the power to change campaign uh, uh, I, I don't know if you are aware of it. It was a global campaign, and and there were, uh, you know, we we were also APC was partaking in that campaign. We were, you know, doing outreaches, and we were giving out books, power to change books all across. So it was a huge campaign, right, uh, globally. And and so, you know, I, for some, I was overseeing that campaign. Now I didn't know about team management building up team meetings, all that. So I remember, uh, you know, pastor came up to me and said, have a team meeting with all the stuff. You know, what to say in the team meeting, right? I, I have no idea what to say, how to speak. And who's in the team meeting? All these pastors and, you know, big people. I was thinking, what do I say? Then I remember we finished the whole meeting and, uh, I just shared, okay, this is what should be done. This is, and then I realized, hey, I have to be able to improve in the way I put across things, I, I and and the way I speak to people, the way I, as a leader, I realized that it's not only about going and preaching in the pulpit. You'll have ten pastors. How will you communicate to them? How will you speak to them? Right, so. So it helped me to understand that, hey, I should sharpen this part also. Team management, how to build teams, how to raise up teams, how to bring correction, how to uh, correctly organize people in the right way, all of this. Then finances, how to make sure finances are in, in place, how to get budget approvals. All of this was learned. Right? Now, if I keep saying, no, we did it that time this way, the the axe is going to be dull. 
right? So keep growing. Let's go to the next point. Take stock of things frequently, review, revise, and refine. Right? Uh, let's read Proverbs 4.26. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Sorry, it says ponder the path of your feet. Right now, the word ponder is to sit and think. Right, so let me paint a picture for you. Think, just imagine you are going into a forest. Right, you get into a forest. You're walking in that forest. What are you doing? You're 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 just walking. Now, for example, you walked in and you've forgotten your way back. What are you going to do? You'll you'll try to find your footprints. You'll try to find something that you've dropped on the way. You'll try to ponder the path that you took. Did I see this tree here? No, I don't think I saw this tree. <laughs> Did I see this, you know, this house here in the middle of the jungle? No, I didn't. That means I'm on the wrong path. Right? Now, when we are walking this life, there will be times we'll have to stop, take stock of things. Meaning, what I've been doing for now, the time frame, we don't know, right? You can choose your own time frame. You can do it every six months, you can do it yearly, you can do it quarterly, you can do it. Uh, every three years, every five years, depends on you. That is your choice. But you take stock of things. Right? Okay. For example, one year, 2023. So one of the things that I did was I opened a Word document and I saw 2022, what was done. 2023, what was done, but what are things that are improved in each of the ministry? How are ways that, what are the new things that we did that has helped improve or places that have, there's no improvement. Why there was no improvement. So I put that all in a Word document. And now you say, okay, 2024. This didn't work because of this. And so there was no progress. Everything remained the same. So 2024, let's change the way we do that. Let's come up with some new ideas, new strategies. Um, right? Or sometimes... You, you, you take stock, you see that things are constant. It's on the same level. Okay, 23 was this, 22 was on a certain level. 23 also looks the same. So not always you'll have to change. You can say, okay, let me try it for another year. If I see progress, I'll continue. But if I don't see progress, let me think of changing it. So what are you doing? You're taking stock of things that you're doing. Now, in ministry, or in your own business, in your workplace. For example, you're working in the IT sector, you've been working there for three years. Three years, you take stock of three years, okay. I was 22 when I joined, now I'm 25. What did I do in these five, three years? What are the improvements that I can see? What are the skills that I have developed? What are the skills I could have developed? What I did, what I didn't do? You're taking stock of things. Okay, so 2024, I need to revise certain things. Instead of coming to office at 9 o'clock, I'm going to come earlier, maybe an hour earlier, and then work on this file or work on this document. Or I'm going to stay back one hour uh, later after office and do this, which will help me. I, you get what I'm saying, right? So you're taking stock. You're frequently looking at your plan, you're revising your plan, you refine your plan. If there's no re require, if you feel there's no requirement of revising a plan, you feel the plan is the same, go ahead. Right? Now, I remember 2020 when the lockdown happened, we had to revise, we had no option. Right? Okay, what is the first thing? Okay, Bible college. What do we do? Go online. 2020? Forms were sent out, right, online. Those who want to register, register. We've never done it before. So 2020 was the first year we did online Bible college. And to our surprise, we had so many people join. And so people joined. And then we thought, hey, 
this is a good way right now if not for covid i don't know if we had, uh, we had ever thought of it right uh, because in online revised plans changed right and now we have this okay we'll do online then we came up with an idea called e learning okay so now that everyone are preferring online i don't we do e learning so people who are already working can log in listen to the classes at their own time but we'll give them a time frame in this four months or five months this is the final day within that date they should finish their course so what's happening revise we are refining the the rules so we are refining things within the organization so the same way uh, uh, when you are working or you start your business you start your ministry take stock of things and revise don't come to a place of saying okay i will keep doing this no you need to look at it as a leader right to grow you need to change first corinthians 13 11 let's read that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. Yeah. To grow, you and I need to change. If we cannot be the same. And look at it in the natural. When we grow, do we change? Yes. Suddenly we start getting a beard. Why? Because we're growing. Right? Suddenly we look different. We know that okay, this person is you know growing. He's physically we can see the change. Same way in the spirit, right? Spiritually, in our work as well. Growth happens. Uh, growth is a happens through a process of change. We are changed from glory to glory. Maturity happens step by step. There will be times, you know, uh, there are people who we may meet who are very matured in the Lord at a very young age. Right? But there are some who are 20 years in the ministry, but they're still not matured. Right? So maturity happens stage by stage. right? And maturity is simply growing up and, and there are changes that you would need to make even in your professional career so let's look at some of those changes uh, which may be simple yet easy so on page 23 on the point to grow you need to change you can probably just mark there one and uh, you can put pointers one two three so number one some of the simple and easy changes building further on your strengths so you have you have a you you know how to play a guitar or an instrument you build on that. Very simple. You're practicing half an hour every day, move it to one hour every day. Build on that. Two, these changes may be significant, rather drastic. These changes may be very small or very big. Yet, these changes are, are you know, are drastic. Meaning, further on, when you look at you see, oh, there's a big change. Imagine, uh, just using this example, imagine from January to December, every day you practice to speak uh, or practice a sermon every day for one year. Tell me what is going to happen. Every day, without fail, okay, half an hour sermon, you're preaching. Or you prepare a sermon and preach, half an hour, every day. Tell me what is going to happen in 2025. Will you be, will you, would you have improved or no? You know it. Even now you'll picture it, right? Oh man. Every day if I preach on sermon by 25, I'd be really, I would have really improved. Look at it as instrument. Every day if I practice half an hour extra, 2025, will you, would you have improved or no? Yes. But how much of change are you doing? Small change. Yet, the result is drastic, big change. Small change each day on the longer run, drastic changes, right? So some changes, uh, uh, changes may be things you anticipated and were intentional about. And right? third one, 
Changes may be things you anticipated and you were inter intentional about. You anticipated that this is what I'm going to do, and you were intentional about learning that. Four, some changes may just come upon you unexpectedly. Right? So sometimes the changes are just unexpected. You will say, okay, I didn't expect this, but God has brought me to this place. So help me to, you know, God, I need to be able to adapt to these changes. Learn to take change in stride. Enjoy the seasons of change, just as the seasons of sustainability and certainty. You know, when things are going in a certain way, right? You know it's sustaining. It's, 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 it's a good feeling. But what about when people, when there's a sudden change? It's like the boat, you know, boat is smooth, and suddenly there's a wind. The boat begins to shake. Right? But enjoy that. Enjoy those changes. Um, take it as, a, as, as something that God is teaching you. Right? Enjoy your life plan. Go with it, and I'm sure as you move along with the life plan, God begins to, God will continue to speak through those seasons and changes. Right. Samuel has raised your hand. Uh, Samuel, do you have any question or any thought? Okay. All right. So we'll just keep going on. Um, let's look at the next point. Look for clarity as you keep journeying. Proverbs 4.18. Anyone would like to read Proverbs 4, 18? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. See, when God gives us a plan, he doesn't say, you, you know, you, you catch a train, you go to this city, and then you go to this place, and I'll open the door there, and then you start your church there. And then I will send this people, and I, and then in five years you'll be like this. No, he's he's not a god who reveals everything, even though he knows everything. Uh, you and I, it is our responsibility to ask God for clarity. Ask God for clarity. So, what must I do? Where to go? Why I should go? How to go? When to go? All these questions may not be clear to us. But even as we journey along in life, we, we can always ask God, God, please tell me. Now, how many of you were forced to come to Bible college? Hopefully not. No, none of us are forced. Right? So you, you went online, you, you sent the registration or the registration form or the application form, you filled it up, you gave it. Did you know how it's going to be? Did you know why you were coming here? Did you know when when things are going to work out for you? You didn't know anything. All you knew is two years or three years course. Some people, some teachers will come teach and go. And that's all you know. So what did you do? You stepped out in faith. But even as you have come and you have joined, you begin to continue to look for clarity. OK, God, I'm here. So when do I, what should I do? How should I go about doing things? Now that I'm here, when what is my next move? You continually ask God the where, the when. So nothing is picture perfect. Nothing is on blueprint. Right? Nothing is like, you know, I know everything. No. We don't know. But we begin to ask God for clarity. How do we ask God for clarity? It's by praying, spending time in God's word. And he begins to bring clarity. Okay, you do this. Right? You do that. Uh, or you, you. I want you to, you know, work in this place for two years, right? Now again, time frame. Uh, he may not give us the time frame, but I want you to work here. And then you pray. You ask God, God, should I stay here? Or what should I do? He begins to give clarity, right? And the most common question youth ask, you know, most of us as pastors is, uh, I don't know what to do. Should I go abroad? Should I apply abroad? Should I stay in India? You know, that person went abroad, they, they had a big trouble. This person, you know, saying, uh, you know, abroad is not good, you know, or, or you should go abroad. And now, mind is all mixed up. Godly counsel is good, it's important. But also remember, you need to hear from God personally. You need God's wisdom. 
you need the leading, the direction, right? And you begin to ask God for clarity. You get what I'm saying, right? Especially when there are life changes that are going to be big life changes, moving to another country, change in career, change in uh, you know a, a plan that you have already made. You know that things are going to change, right? Uh, you got to ask God for the why, the when. Ask God for clarity, right? Avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome. Interesting. Psalms 32, 8 and 9. Let's read that. Psalms 32, 8 and 9. I will not instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. It's a wonderful example here. See, God has instructed us that he will, promised us that he will instruct, he will teach us, he will guide us in this life journey. Right? Now, how he speaks to you and how he speaks to me is different. Okay? You know why I was so certain that there's a change in my, you know, I was sharing, you know, I got a dream. I don't get dreams. Some of them, get, they having tea, they'll get a dream. But for me, it's, I don't get dreams, but if I get a dream, I know that it is something important or something you know, that I just know it. That's for me. Right? Now, for you, it could be that you're reading a verse in the Bible and God just speaks to you. Or you're talking to somebody and that person is just talking randomly about something. God speaks to you. Right. Or it could be you're praying and you just know in your heart, okay, God, I know I want to do this. Right. So don't compare how God is speaking to you and compare it with others. Right. You ask God, but even as you asking God, avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome. Now, this is very interesting. What does a donkey do? You got to keep telling the donkey, move, take the step, no. By the time the donkey takes a step, yes, that you know, it's not easy. Saul was looking after his father, his father's donkeys. Donkeys are not easy to work with. Suddenly they'll go left. Suddenly they'll go right. Suddenly they won't go. Very slow. The donkeys. Then you look at the horse. If the horse doesn't have the uh, the bridle, no, what's it called? Is it called the bridle? Yeah. If it if it doesn't have that. What is going to happen? He's going to keep running. Now look at a horse race. Can we send the horses alone to run for the race? Never. What will happen? They'll go wherever they want. They'll keep running. No. So that 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 bridle that is there, it, it controls them. So here you have the donkey, which doesn't want to take a step. Here you have the horse, which wants to be ready to run. So God is saying, don't be like the donkey, don't be like the horse. Don't be too slow and be dreaming all the time. Don't be like the horse in a hurry to do everything. Control yourself. Remember to walk in step with God. I love Proverbs. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Walk in step with God. Okay, God, I don't want to take this step unless you are leading me. So, do you think I should take this step, Lord? Speak to me. I, uh, is it a step that I should take now, or should I wait for another year? Leave it to God. Right? He will speak to you. He has his own ways of instructing, teaching, and guiding you. Right? He wants to establish your life plan. He knows your life plan. We don't have to remind him. Yes or no? Oh, for Abraham, Abraham, God reminded Abraham. Why? Because after 15 years, somewhere Abraham lost confidence. What is this? You said, I'll be the father of many nations. I don't have a son. You said you'll bless me with a son. Nothing's happening now. But after 15 years of giving the promise, God told Abraham, come out of your tent. Abraham came out. He said, look up the stars. When he looked up, he said, that many 
will be your descendants. You will be as many as the stars that you see in the sky. God is reminding Abraham, I have not forgotten my promise. I know I told you, you were 75 years old when I gave you that promise. Now you are 90 years old. You think I forgot your pro the pro covenant that I made with you? No. I am reminding you, it is still there. But God didn't tell Abraham, you got to wait another 10 years. Right? So you don't be like the donkey, unwilling to follow God and his leading. Don't be like the horse, running off ahead of what God, uh, you know, when God has not spoken or not directed your path. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Right? Pro Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. We can rest in that God delights, or he closely engages himself in the path that we are taking. God directs our path. Even if we make a mistake and we fall, God is able to restore us. He's able to direct us. Can you think of one example in the Bible where somebody made a mistake? God had a plan for him. He made a mistake, yet the mistake had consequences. Yet God used him. Jonah, okay. Who else? David? Okay. No, I'm talking about a life plan. So, see. Abraham also, yes, yes. You know, when God already gave the covenant, he went with Hagar. Okay. Still, God kept his promise. That's a good one. Yes. Think of it. Very, very, very nice example. Perfect example that we can learn. He made a mistake. He knew what God had called him to do. He made a mistake. There was a delay, but still, God used him. Yeah, Jack and said. <laughs> Jackin's given the answer here, but Jackin, I'm not going to say it out loud. Any other guesses? No one else? Okay, Jackin's got it right. It's Moses. Right? Uh, Moses was how old? 40 years old? What happened? He knew he's going to bring the people out of Egypt. Right? He knew it. So he tried to take matters in his own hands. He kills an Egyptian. Did he make a mistake? Yes. So what happened? 40 years. Looking after sheep. This learned man learned in the uh, you know Pharaoh's palace. Learned. But now looking after not even his, his father-in-law's sheep. Looking after sheep. But God didn't say, okay, now what to do? Let's choose somebody else. No. Moses, it's time. 40 years of delay. So when, when, even when we make mistakes, don't feel that God has put you aside. God will not do that, right? If he has a plan, we recognize our mistake. I'm sure Moses would have thought, you know, in those 40 years, he would have thought, man, I should have killed that Egyptian. I was OK there, you no, know, looking after everyone. What if I didn't kill him? But he may have thought of it. Or he may have also had guilt. Oh, no, I know that God had told me about this, but I made a mistake. You must have thought that way. But in all of that, God still didn't change his plan. So when we are ordered by God, God is ordering our steps. Remember to stay in line with what he does. Don't jump the line. Don't be like the horse that's trying to do things on his own. Wait on the Lord. Take your time. Right? God's clock is very different to our clock. Right? Next one. Trust God even when you can't figure out everything. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Let's read that. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not. On your own understanding. Look at this. Uh, the message translation in your book says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Very nice, no? Can we figure out everything on our own? We can try, but we can't. Right? Because there is the unexpected. 
there are things that happen that is beyond our control. Yes or no? Right? Beyond our control. We cannot do anything. For example, I don't want to say this example, but okay, 2020, it was beyond our control. We didn't do anything. Churches had to go online, everything went online. So it's not in our control. And you know, many, many of them who had businesses, who had started up businesses, they went through big losses. And I personally know of people who started, you know, in 2019, end of 2019, 2020 lockdown, they went through loss. And these are good believers. And, uh, you know, sometimes they ask, the question, why, why did this happen? So we don't know. As leaders also, we don't know. So they ask, did I make a mistake by doing this? Did I not hear from God? Where did I go wrong? Right? Just a few months and then the lockdown happened, my business went down. See, we can't figure out God in the way he does things. Right? But what we can do is continue to trust in God. Trust him with all our heart. Because our understanding is small. He may have a certain reason as to why God is doing it in a certain way. All we can do is trust. Our planning and preparation is an expression of our stewardship towards God. That means what? We are saying, God, you have given me this life, so I don't want to waste my life. So I'm writing a plan for my life. But you are the, you are the one who's in control of that plan, not me. But as a good steward, I'm, I'm planning for my life. This is what I will do. You know, you should read the book of Leviticus. It talks about order and design. In Leviticus, and even in Numbers, Leviticus Numbers, God was so meticulous in certain things. You know, he even tells the Israelites, when you're walking out, when you're walking in the wilderness, carrying the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle, when you're carrying, these are the, you know, the tribes that this tribe will go first, this tribe will go second, this tribe will go third. He says to them, which tribe goes when? In the book of Numbers, he, he says to them, these number of people must be at the temple. These people must be in the army. These are the judges. These are the priests. These are the high priests. Numbers he gave. Meticulous. Right? So when, when, what do we learn from that? God is a God who plans. As God's children, we must plan. We plan, we say, God, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel that God, that I'm led to do. But I surrender this plan to you, God. You lead me. You order my steps. Right? It is responding with gratitude and sincerity to what God has entrusted on, upon each one of us. Right? God has entrusted certain things in our lives. He, he's saying, this is what I'm giving you. We must learn. To look after it, be good stewards of okay. it. Right. Finally, the last point here: step up to your mountain. Let's read Joshua 4, uh, 14 and verse twelve. Joshua fourteen verse twelve. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Now, in this time, Joshua has gained confidence. Right? Initially, he was a little weary. Moses is gone. He was trying to get things done. Now, Joshua 14, he's confident that God is with him, because God told him, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. God has done, given him victories already. And here he's saying, God, give me this mountain. He's not requesting. He's asking God. He's saying, God, now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you have heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were, were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out. As the Lord has said. You see the confidence there. Joshua is saying, give me this mountain. Now, when we talk about mountains, we also talk about 
seven spheres or seven mountains of influence in society right and these seven mountains are there in your notes number one family which is the institution set up by god religion the church and the people of god education schools colleges universities uh, media print newspaper electronics tv internet arts and entertainment that is sports arts entertainment business then you got the business section which is innovation of science technology then government so so basically the in society these are the seven spheres so whatever we choose as a career it is within these seven spheres right so one of the prayers that joshua made was give me this mountain you and i can pray and say lord if for example education is your mountain you feel that god has called you to be a teacher or you want to start your own school say god give me this mountain when as i take this mountain give me the wisdom to be victorious to be successful in this mountain and my success should be seen uh, by people and they will glorify you in heaven right and so uh, you know there are many schools that i know of uh, and i think we may have seen as well uh, christian schools uh, in cities and in um, different nations where the main motto is god the school is built because to glorify god right to so that god is glorified to raise up children in the ways of the lord that's the main motto so then if you look at arts and entertainment you know uh recently somebody sent me a video of uh, uh this boxer right uh and a uh, very very wonderful video very powerful video right he's a he's a world champion for many years he's a millionaire right? he's a boxer right he's a world champion he's a millionaire but he is a strong believer right uh, i will i'll not name him uh, but he's a strong believer but what's his profession boxing hitting one <laughs> now listen it's a sport right? it's a sport boxing is a sport he's a world champion okay and he's a full time believer like he's most of his uh, income he gives to churches he goes to churches and he says after every win he takes the mic and he preaches like you know they say okay you know, normally they'll say say a few words as the champion of this tournament he says it is not because of me it is because of the grace of god you believe in the lord jesus he can take a person like me who is weak and weary and make him a world champion he preaches right that's his mountain right look at football or american football or uh, uh, or even soccer you have many believers who are there that's their mountain right then you have uh, in arts and entertainment you may have people who are believers and they that's their mountain right and they stand up for the things of god stand up for integrity for honesty right and then you have government there are people in government very hard place to be but you can ask god god give me this mountain that even as i live i may not be able to change everything but let people see you in my life let people see that you know as as a believer these are the things that i have done not by uh, my own strength but by the grace of god what was daniel's job full time pastor where was he what was his which mountain was he in Alliance. government right he made a difference right so like that the same each one of us can make a difference you see the sphere you're in and say god give me this mountain enable me to make a change in this mountain amen right so uh, even as we continue to learn next week we will get into right to workplace attitude so first chapter we saw that god is giving us a plan he's made us for a reason for a purpose chapter 2 we looked at career plan how we can plan out our career now once we are as we are planning out we got to look, have good right workplace attitudes right so whether it is ministry again it's an organization or whether you're in the corporate sector any sphere of influence we need these right workplace attitudes and so next class we'll get into that right okay so let's close uh, we'll just say a word of prayer and we'll close father we thank you so much for teaching us today and uh, 
We pray, God, that you will continue to speak to us and minister to us, Lord. We thank you that your word says that you will lead us, instruct us, and guide us. That our steps are ordered by you, Lord, and we just surrender our lives to you. Pray, God, that you will continue to minister to us through every season that we are in, O oh God. May your name be glorified in each of our lives. We pray for each and every student, those online, those who will be watching this through the e-learning portal, Lord. I speak your blessing over each one of them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you next week. Have a good week ahead.